Hey, come look, people. Hey, guys. Do we just do the same thing? I, I oh, you wave. All right. Yeah, so, Vulcan. peace out. I oh, know we're peace in. Live long and prosper. <laughs> True. Hey, um. Yeah, we're just getting messages as soon as Yeah, <laughs> sorry, guys. Got messages again. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Uh, Malfunction. Rico? Yep. <laughs> And, um, hey, we, yeah, we're going to do this a weekly, hopefully, right? We'll try. Yeah, we'll try weekly if, if we can. And um, this is us. This is our, this is going to be like our Facebook channel thing, right? Hey, it's fun. Let's talk about it's fun some week, good feedback. I've, I've heard good things. People enjoy us babbling on. Cool. They mentioned you look a bit like Gandhi. <laughs> I'm back with my hat that's now. A, that's a compliment. That's a cover. Hey, I actually don't mind that. Yeah. I, but he was a racist, so, uh, yeah. <laughs> He was racist towards black people. Yeah. That's a twist. Yeah, exactly, right? Like, nobody sort of talks about that sort of thing. See, everybody has a little bit of weirdness in their background. I'm sure all of us do. Yeah. <laughs> if we dig hard enough. Anyway, I know I do. That's why I don't want to go public. Like, be a, I don't want to be a politician because of that. Imagine being a politician, right? People going through... be the naughty politician. Yeah, oh, you know, people going through your freaking background and digging up everything that you said, like, maybe about, you know... 10 years ago just when social media started up and you did something stupid on there and it's like oh well, I, that I just don't have time for that like yeah, it's, it's, it's funny it's in a way I think be yourself and like yeah. don't have regrets like it's it. if you do something a little bit dubious maybe just yeah. own up to it the weird thing is if you're doing something in, like this is something that was happening online like on Twitter that somebody had, like hold on somebody had said something oh had, right right segue segue Talking about, if I remember on my list here, no, it's not on my list, but it should be, Guns and Kimbo. This has got to do with oh. Guns and Kimbo. All right? So, <laughs> watched it, loved it, liked it, and want you to watch it as well. You've if, seen it. Yeah, if you're into, because you, you can do it on YouTube. What? Yeah, you can watch it. Oh, jeez, yeah. I am definitely going to watch it. Anyway, so hopefully you can stream it now. All right? And so you can stream it now and watch it, because what was going to happen, it was going to go to the movies. And obviously something happened, and they pulled it from the theaters. I'm kidding. Yeah. I mean, I was looking and this to is that. a Kiwi director, so Jason Lay Howard, Haywood, Howard, if I remember right, I'll make sure I look it up properly because we're here. Uh, so he went and defended a, a female who was getting bullied, right? A female who was getting bullied, and he was defending her. And someone had used something she had said in private to a friend. As a joke, all right, and this is why I'm going to be the, the whole Twitter thing, as a joke to a friend, and they used that private message against hey, her on Facebook, on Twitter, to destroy her. Hey, Tama. Uh, you destroy someone. Yeah, well, basically, try to almost commit a suicide. The chick almost committed suicide. Yeah, well, I mean, reaction, yes. Yeah. But how do you destroy someone by just... Well, basically, they piled on her. Like totally abused the hell out of it, and she got to a point where she was almost committing, almost ended up taking her own life. And this is the whole thing about people digging up people's past, and like we're talking about, like just things that they said. But they've said this one was actually between two friends in private who knew each other personally. See, me and him, we could be having go at each other off camera, and somebody could basically record that and suddenly put that online, and now we're suddenly evil people, right? Or one of us is. But so this, so this is the crazy thing. So guns are Kimbo, right? Getting back to the guns are Kimbo thing. So Jason went and, um, you know, defended her. And of course they piled on him. So he couldn't defend people piling up on a female from, by other females because he wasn't black. So you can't defend a person can't who's been bullied. If you're male and you're, not you're like, white, and if you're white, you can't defend a female if you're white. That's weird. Yeah. So basically, this forced him to apologize. He shouldn't have. Right. Well, I don't know why people apologize for when they're defending somebody. Ricardo, hey man. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing on there? <laughs> I'm just sharing with the peeps. Oh right, cool. Sorry, man. My bad. See. <laughs> That could be taken way out of context. Somehow, somebody would. But, but so, it's got Samara Weaving, and it's got Daniel Radcliffe. I, how does it work? Are the guns stuck to his hands? Yeah, they basically, he's, he's a troll, right? So his whole job is to basically get rid of stuff that's, that's on social media. That He's like a censor. 
Yeah. Right. People saying stupid things on on an, on the internet, and he's a censor on there. So he's basically censoring all these people's stuff. Or you know, getting rid of. He's a troll buster. That's what it is. Troll buster. Fair enough. Or a troll hunter. Right. So he's <laughs> basically hunting trolls. And one night he he has a bad day at work, whatever, and he just gets drunk and drunk and drunk and drunk and drunk and decides, oh, you know what? I want to jump on. Um, and this is a setup, so it doesn't matter. Once you get here, after this is all good stuff. And I won't tell you all the good stuff. So this this is a setup. So basically, he's being a total dick, right? He's being a total dick, and he tries to um, troll these guys, and you know, just call them, you know, bad stuff, saying how they're anonymous, so they can say whatever they want behind the screen, you know, like us right now. But we're not anonymous because everybody knows us right here. But yeah, I guess I think I just shot myself in the foot there. So basically, like he probably does. Anyway, I'm going off topic, sorry. It's been a long day. So anyway, so he's doing all this, and next thing you know, people knock on the door, and the rest of the movie gets wild from there. And How do the guns get stuck to his hands? Oh, they they basically screwed the guns into his fingers. That's cool. I wondered. I watched oh, right, it, right, and I right, thought right, those yeah. guns look like oh, yeah, they're stuck on his hands. The, that's in the driving, trailer, right? He's driving with the guns on his hands, right. I'm pretty sure. So that's in the trailer. So and that's... even that the title's what made me think, are the guns stuck in his hands? Because I wasn't sure. Yeah, so... Yeah, I forgot that it was in the trailer. So... Basically, they screw his, uh, to, to his fingers. And that spoils like, enough, guys. Like, imagine... Yeah, that's it. So imagine trying What's to... What's your rating? Out of ten, was it... Was it eight. Eight? Eight. That's yeah. high praise. Yeah, and I get... free. I... Streamed online. No, no, you can buy it. Right? Okay. Yeah, you can buy it on. I think it's YouTube. You can buy it to I've stream. Been looking, I thought it was coming to the movies. I was waiting for that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I wanted to get the posters. I got okay. it posted, so I was hoping the posters. But it's a good film, and it's by a Kiwi director. I didn't even know it was by a Kiwi director until I, I no idea, until either. his name came up, and it's funded by us. You, us, New Zealand taxpayers. Are you sure it's not the US? No, that part partly they'll be there, but New Zealand Film Foundation. Well, no, Creative New Zealand. Thanks, Jacinda. Thanks to us, because I mean we've been doing that for years. Like a part of our taxpayer dollar goes into New Zealand Film Commission. It always has, and th that's why we have such. It a is cool for the community projects and that I've yeah, kind of that's why, out for yeah. things at times. And I haven't been successful. I haven't really done a big move, but I know mm. there's good funding for for people well, doing creative I mean, stuff. Stuff like us with Plunge, like when we put on Plunge, we get a bit of uh, funding Huge through community support. Support, yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, funding for us comes through like actual physical and actual. Per, like last year, there was like tickets purchased on behalf of us. I mean, for us, sorry, on behalf of people for us. Anyway, so there's a lot of great group um, community stuff. And I think it's worth watching Gun, Guns and Kimbo. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for joining in. Hey, David. You made it sound like you packed something Yeah, off. almost there. Well, almost there. I was like, yeah, always. That's almost. all, folks. Yeah. <laughs> but thanks for watching. So, do you want to add anything on Guns of Kimbo before I finish up I, on that? I didn't even know much about it. You've just kind of spoiled the whole yeah. thing. No, you haven't spoiled it. Well, I, 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 I was curious. Setup. You've answered some questions. Yeah. So, the, it's it's really <laughs> Eight out of good. ten. It's really okay. good. Watch it. I, I enjoyed it. it. It's kind of... Does he do any magic in it? No, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't Harry Potter. But Samara... It is Harry Potter. Samara, it is Harry Potter acting Jeez. in it. Samara Weaving, right? Samara Weaving's in it, and I didn't even know... That she was in it. That's how awesomely that that she different she looks in it. Now, let me just bring up um, who Samara Weaving is because I've seen her in it quite a few things and I've so forgotten. I, I need to look at this too because I don't. All right. So I, I went a bit different today. I got my old laptop. I got out. resources today. Yep. I got the old resources. Um, all right, Samara. We have a bit of a reaction of it as well from the Bloodshot trailer number two that Aru hasn't experienced. So yeah, that'll be interesting. I was like, "What are you going to do?" And he's like, Argh. <laughs> "All right." So this is the this is the crazy thing. Like, so. Oh, hello. Right. So she's <laughs> she, she's Australian. Lived in Singapore. Lived in Fiji. Lived in Indonesia. Um, and she's quite a gorgeous young lady. Yeah. Um, she's been on Ready or Not. What'd you say, like, out of 10? I don't know. Like, <laughs> no, 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 we can't. No, we can't. Do day that. age. She wasn't Babysitter. I love Babysitter. I think that was a good movie. Is that the one where she's like a Satanist? Yes. That was a good movie. That was that was definitely Netflix. a good movie. Yeah. Damn, that, that was fun. Is it on Netflix now? It was on Netflix. It was on Netflix. Cool. Oh, um, 
Jones. Yeah, I, I, I saw it. Uh, um, Super cool. Yeah. Okay, so she was in Ready or Not that just came out last year. And mm-hmm. uh, I'll just pull up what that's about because I read about it but didn't watch it. So, all right, so Ready or Not is a bride's wedding night. A uh, bride's wedding that takes a sinister turn when her eccentric n- new, son- new in-laws force her to take part in a terrifying game. So that the, the trailer to that looked freaky. Uh, um, but I haven't got around to do it. Like, if you see that cover, she's like basically got... What is that called? Bandolier? Is that what it... Ba- the bullet belt? Yeah. That's yeah a, is that what that's, that's a bandolier, my yeah, friend. Yeah, so she, that's like on the cover. So you know this is going to be good yeah, action good movie. for something. I don't know much about some yeah. of these topics, but... So it's a bandolier. horror comedy mystery. 6.8. Out of from sixty six, and that's the people. I mean, yeah. often when you go and see these things, they can be like awesome, and people are going, "Ah, oh, no, it's a four. Yeah. I always go on the average on IMDb. I like it for that reason, rather than Rotten Tomato or anything like that. Because when you see the average number of people, you know, when you got sixty six thousand, I don't know, but that's a bunch of opinionated people. Hmm. Like, in my opinion, I just like I go on friends and I go on myself, like, right. and often it's best to take with a grain of salt. I f- I find. Like, I've, I've been following IMD for maybe 20 years since I was mm-hmm. at film school. So, because that's when they started up, when it used to be like, well, you guess, could say whatever you I wanted. I guess the question is, what did Into the Woods get on IMDb? Okay, we'll find out. that was a shitty movie. Like, I had to run away and that movie went on and on and on. Did you stop? Watching with the family. No, I couldn't stop with other people watching it. I left the room and, fuck, I don't know, I played PlayStation. It was tragic. 5.9. Now, see, this like is, a whole this is number an example. down. Like a like, whole point like, down. No, but have you this, seen that this, movie? This, that movie is the most tragic piece of right. trash I've ever seen in my life. That should be a one. It's got Meryl Streep on it. Who wants to watch Meryl Streep anymore? Oh, as you haven't watched this clearly, please it's a PG. watch it. Please watch this and then have a gun on the bench and you'll be like reaching for it. And then, then you can watch. It's based on a it musical. It is painful, people. Maybe it's like Cats. It's horrible. Try it. Like it's based on a musical. So I'd it's rather like watch kids, a, no a reaction thing. video of this guy to Into the Woods. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just hang the rope well, over well, here. Shit. Talking about talking about cats. Let's let's have a look at cats. Well, I like the look of cats to be honest. Well, let's see what what can't ca- be the I'm, cats got two point eight. IMDb show. Yeah, the cats got two point eight. They pulled themselves, like the director and the studio pulled themselves from the Oscars because that's how tragic that was. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm sorry, but I'd rather watch Cats ten times in a row than watch Into the Woods half, halfway through. Okay. Jesus. I can't <laughs> believe you haven't seen that. That's, no. Oh, oh, it's the adventure comedy. Someone, someone throw up a comment. I'm sure you people have seen this. Yeah. Into the Woods. Terrible, terrible movie. Child molested Johnny Depp. And, no, oh. he, no, it's not Wait, like, it's he not looks John- like it. No, he plays the wolf in the woods. Spoilers. Wait, but it's Johnny very, Depp is in it? Oh, it's it is. a very it's molestery little... performance oh, if you haven't yeah. seen it. Anyway, it's basically like Cats then, because that was, <laughs> from what I saw of that, that was really bad. Um, okay, so anything else to add on, on that before we move on to the next one? No. I'm, All right. I'm good. I've had my rant. I, right. don't, I don't normally rant, it's your thing, but Into the Woods. And that just shows into um, how bad movie that movie database. Is? No, well, it should be far worse. No, no, but it should just... be a one. Yeah. Or a two. It's it's like That's five's kind of like just be, people give oh, it a five. Come on. No, no, give me let me. Sh- uh, my idea of what IMDb is, a five is just like oh, it's a movie. It's been yeah, made. But the, this movie is a it. movie that makes people want to kill themselves. Yeah, five point <laughs> nine is like oh, okay, they had good actors in it. That's it. Yeah, but this has. But that, when you get into six plus, plus, then you go oh, it's actually a good and story. And it's uh, getting better. It's tragic. Yeah. Anyway, I will stop going on about that. We're losing right. the viewers. Oh, that's not good. Okay, so The Last of Us. Posted about this earlier. I've played the game. You've played most yeah. of the game. Well, I've played some of the so, game. So here's here's what they've said. So like, the, um, this is on from Collider. Posted just the other day. The long-awaited sequel to The Last of Us finally arrives for gamers everywhere this May 29th. So in two months. Uh, but a bonus bit of news has popped up today concerning an adaptation of the Sony PlayStation exclusive, one that's headed to HBO with some top-tier talent behind the scenes. Uh, as The Hollywood Reporter reports, The Last of Us TV series is in the works with writers, executive producers. See, I'm going to have to talk to you about executive producers. And we were talking about Possible that before. movie adaptation. Uh, yeah, and um, so where are we? In the works with writers... From the guy from uh, Chernobyl and the guy from the Last of Us franchise, Uncharted, 
and Uncharted well, franchise. Uncharted, yeah, well, they're well put together yeah. games. Mm. I can say that I didn't play the way through Last of Us, but if you did Drake's Fortune and all that, <laughs> good, good mm. director. So they're saying they're going to release it in a couple of months, uh, release right ahead of the sequel. So when this gets off the ground, or whether it's just a well-timed media bump, ahead of the sequel thing remains to be seen. But a TV series is a departure from the previous plans of a possible movie adaptation. Oh. So they were going to do a movie. Oh. The reason people don't do movies now and go to TV series is the money. Right? That's the, that's what it all comes down to. They do Unless, the TV series. yeah, if you get Netflix involved, Netflix will put a lot of money, right? And so not because they get exclusive to get it on Netflix around the world. So you've got what half a billion people around the world that have Netflix. So imagine Probably. that, maybe more, <laughs> right? Uh, imagine, imagine probably, yeah, maybe more than that, way more than that. So imagine those people basically being able to, a, a cent of that going in towards that. And then you've got all the other companies, then you'll get like, the um, you know, Sony will be putting up money to making sure it works fine. This guy who created that will be saying, I'm going to make sure my story comes out fine, no one joke. So, but then they go, well, you know what, it's going to cost us such and such millions of dollars. What if we do a TV series where we can keep using the same, 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 you know, sets over and over again? Well, it's just like a long movie. Right. It's kind of how they are nowadays. And, yeah. and so, they have decent budgets. Like Swamp yeah. Thing, bloody incredible. Right. Like, they shouldn't have stopped that, but it's an awesome series. And well, that, so much into it. that had to do with tax breaks. Yeah. See, if they did it in New Zealand, they would be fine. They did a fantastic... Yeah, yep. they put some quality, quality in it. It's as good as a yep. movie. It's like that... Those first couple of episodes were like a horror movie. Yeah. Brilliant. I think I watched two episodes of it. I clocked out because I got... I was too busy. Got I was just gutted when I heard that it stopped. Mm. I'll be honest, I didn't finish it, but I should have. I'll go back and do yeah, it. But the thing is, when you find out that people are going to stop it halfway through, is why would you want to carry on watching but it? It was such a good quality production. Yeah. I, I got to where Blue Devil was just being introduced as not in costume, and I was looking forward you, to it. You're spoiling it. for people. No, well, he's no people <laughs> know Blue Devil is in it. Who's Blue Devil? Anyway. <laughs> he's like a C luster, I suppose. Yeah. But that's a cool thing, like you're saying. Like, it was uh, like they, a cameo character. Right. So, the thing about TV shows is, like, because you can use the sets over and over again, the budget goes down. And not only that, you have a, you have a sold audience. Right? You've got an audience already, a paid-for format already. Whereas if you do it for the theatre, now you have to go and do about, at least about 20 million of promotion only, alone, and promotion, just on promotion. Forget the making of the movie and hiring of the actors. Twenty million, ten to twenty million dollars is kind of the average around the world now to make a uh, to promote a movie, and that's why a lot of the movies fail because they don't have that sort of budget to promote it. But the other thing is, if you've got a two hundred million dollar movie and you don't sell all the tickets to make it, because you've got to make it twice, right? So if it's a two hundred dollar, two hundred million dollar movie, you've got to make at least two hundred, four hundred fifty to break even because at the end of the day you're only going to get, because the, the, tick, um, the cinemas take money your promotion takes money your actors take money and so on and some of them might have like um, uh, clauses in there that like if this does well we'll get a percentage cut mm -hmm. of merchandise and all that yeah yeah anyway so getting sidetracked Tangent. so you know the last of us will have merchandise hopefully I mean the game's merchandise yep. isn't it right so, but then they'll have character, like actual people looking like the actual selves from the actors, I mean, right? Yeah. And they'll have a merchandise coming based on them. And then you'll have all the t-shirt designs and all this. And they might even go, bait. then they might do like comic book series, which they always do. They have done. Right? Which, with the, of the movies, right? Oh, so, wow. I mean, of the TV series. Oh, yeah. Sorry. So they'll do it of the TV series. Like Witcher. Mm. Witcher has already got its own thing. Well, yeah. But then they'll go back and do the... You know, background might, so, Well, I suppose sometimes they do the mm. feature kind of ones. I don't know with the streaming ones whether it's so much the case. Because well, often it's coming from, like, well, uh, printed medium a lot yeah. of times. Initially. Well, you look at Game of Thrones, right? Um, hey, Sandy. Came from a book. Still looking forward to playing x Yo, Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, so... Now i got Star Trek again. i got to watch that. Um, yeah, so, so the, the whole merchandising thing that comes with that... And I think um, because by actually going to TV and it'll be the, you know, 10 episodes, right, mm -hmm. equates to maybe about $100 million. 
So you could, and you'll have a budget of something like about five to ten, or five, maybe four to five million, depending who the actors are getting in to play them, of per episode. Mm. So, so you, you you can probably about fifty million dollars. You're cutting your budget for a movie in half straight away. You're losing me with all these numbers. Right, but this, this losing what, my fans. That's, and but okay, so <laughs> in the old days, right? In the old days, people used to look down on TV. If you're a TV actor. That's true, yeah. So you, TV you're like trash. More... You're like trash. Now, just like YouTube. Well, I don't know. There was TV right. heroes. Yeah. A team. Yeah. Gilligan's Island and all that kind of stuff. Right. But they're never fully equated to film. Yeah, it was different. But there was certainly some right. like A grade kind of TV at the time. Right. So you had like George Clooney who actually made it to film, right? And made a big name for himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, but like, yeah, but. Previously, and even when, you know, 20 years ago, they'd be looking down on them, but because of Netflix and everybody's got TV inside, you know, movies in their homes without even having to go out to get DVDs That's and all that, true. you just switch on. The audience, you have a captive um, captive audience. So because you've got a captive audience, why not just make, you know, spend a spend $100 million on a TV series instead of making $100 million on just one film, right? So, it, so you can sell, not only do you get to um, show that, but if you're doing... Because it's on Netflix, you, you're going to have anybody... I think, I think because it. the quality has gone up, I mean, people are wanting to make longer features. Yeah. Their stories might take longer than three hours to tell the story. Exactly. And so that's what it gives you. It gives you the ability to make a feature film that lasts for, I don't know, 20 hours. And, and then you develop like, the characters Hell yeah, more. and then you can get into more material. Yeah. And so a lot of stories fit in a novel-sized book. But, I mean, mm. these series sometimes can be like a, a whole series of novels yeah. because they last so long. They come out season two, three, four. Breaking Bad. Like, I... Yeah, I mean, you watch that and you're like... Uh, one episode, you're like, what is this? It was just, and you just, it was a crazy ride. You were just hooked in for the whole series. There was one episode, the yeah. one with the fly, and it was designed to make you go nuts. Like, a, I, I barely lasted that episode. Mm. But then Box Cutter brought it back for me. Anyway. It's been a while. Like, Gus, like, goes off the rails a bit. Gus Frame. Sorry. The guy who works in the uh, chicken diner place. No? Box cutter. Okay. The best, e- well, best episode, in my opinion. What was your favorite episode? Um, death of um, when he kills the girlfriend. Oh yeah, that was a good episode. That was that was a real. It was a downturn. Though. Is that uh, kind yeah, of yeah? What I mean, it, that's, that sticks in my head. It was like this is like this is like the. This is like the pivotal point of this whole thing. Is like well, I think both of us is yeah. when it took a dark turn. Yeah, and it's like Jesus is. There's not much coming back from that. Yeah, how do you, you know, how do you, yeah, like you're not a good guy anymore. That's it. You know, you you've, you've crossed the line. But you're a jerk. But he was trying to save himself rather than save. Yeah, he, he just it, got it was, greedy. Yeah, it was he, like just, it was on a power trip. But she was also like taking him down that that he was going to end up dying himself, right? The uh, his, oh, what's his name? Can't remember his name now. Jesse. Jesse. Jesse was going to end up in the same, same place as her, which is end up probably dying of. Um, well, that's true. He was trying to come right. Yeah. Yeah. It was, yeah it was because rough. that that was the thing. It was like it's a real rough moment because you're thinking like, he's, is he trying to save her, save himself, or save uh, or save Jesse? Right. So himself, her, or Jesse, and he chose Jesse. But he... It was a tough decision. Yeah, it was really crazy. Anyway, so back to this thing. So they're going to... Yeah, so the guy who who's going to be in charge of being the showrunner and writer of this is the guy from Chernobyl, which I haven't seen, so I can't talk, say anything about it. But I've heard... You know, people have said good things about Chernobyl. Um, okay, so that's that. Now, the latest thing that's show that's coming out from one of my favorite directors, mm-hmm. Alex Garland, you might know him from Ex Machina. Uh, you also, you might know him from Dread 3D. And um, did you say Dread 3D? Yep, <laughs> Dread, like in Judge Dread. Yeah, right. Uh, so he's 3D? he's a he's a novelist. So he's a writer himself, screenwriter, film producer, and director. Uh, Ex Machina was awesome. His last movie was in 2018, Annihilation. So this is a um, and also he did The Beach, which my my brother loves. I still haven't seen the beach. Yeah, he actually went to the beaches, wherever they fil- wherever it's filmed. I yeah, I, I I've never read it. Uh, I think I gave him the book for it, but I've never read the book 
or watch the movie. But 28 Days Later. Yeah, yeah. Right? Well, great movie. So, Sunshine, Never Let Me Go. I love Never Let Me Go. The original, as well as the English trans, um, English version. So, yeah, so he's... Um, Is that the Stallone dread he did? No, he did the one after. No, no. Did he do it with Eddie Shanker? Must be. That was a good... You're doing Carl Urban. Yeah, that was a good dread movie. Eddie Shanker. Who's yeah. Eddie Shanker? Eddie Shanker's a man. Go look up the dread movie. It's, it's amazing to follow that guy. All right. He did the um um what's the word, the bootleg version of uh, Power Rangers on. Oh, YouTube. Shankar. Yeah. Well, I don't know. But like, like his friendly is on there. You like? I you're him. telling me the English name of his pronunciation of his name. Jeez, it's like... no need to get racist <laughs> on me. I know. I'm like, yes. but Shankar. I'm going home. Castlevania. Yes, he's a yeah. legend. I love that guy. He's so cool. Season three is coming out. Is it out this month? I think so. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So, yeah, Shenko is awesome. Didn't he do Power Rangers? Yes. Talk about which... Oh, no, he, did, he did the reboot that was on YouTube that was better than the movie they made right. afterwards. That so was the, inspired by it. I just saw on YouTube today that they're doing a remake of the movie. They're rebooting it. Yeah. Because it's darker. <laughs> no, it's, it's going to be um, the um, red... Who's the main captain? Or the leader? Main guy? Red Ranger? All right, Red Ranger is going to be <laughs> female. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. a twist. What a yeah. surprise. What about the other characters there? Uh, and there's also going to be a gay ranger. Yeah? Oh, good. Yeah. good. So I think they said that there's about three female so, rangers. Yeah, there should be an amputee one. <laughs> oh, <They'll>, shit. <laughs> it didn't say that. You know, hey, I'm hand I'm not handicapped, but I'm pretty broken. So I don't take that as anything. That's good. I'm lucky I'm not handicapped because, I mean, not handicap like my back car accident could have been worse yeah it could have gone through the windscreen okay so life is shit sometimes not for alex galland he's doing well <laughs> he so, looks hungover <laughs> it does that's the thing i was looking at <laughs> this it's like even the second picture is gone and he's looking I guess sideways he's a director yeah. so i mean it looks like on the same on. cold day okay it? so in case you guys are trying to figure out why what, yeah so let me see if I can. This is no, sorry, too much light. This is a hangover. Is he an English uh, fellow? He must be English. Yeah, this is yeah. a second picture on IMDb. It was a cold day in Brixton. Right. Yeah, so the first picture that he's actually got on there has got him looking directly at us. Wow, well, but yeah, he's having a few pints. It's fair enough. Could be. Maybe he had a bad curry. But yeah, he's looking like <laughs> like that. You have to just just go on IMDb but, and check an Alex Garland. But yeah, so I'm I'm waiting for um, maybe so. But so the new TV series just come out. Like um, so uh, who's doing it? Hulu, right? So does Netflix do Hulu? No, that's a competition. Yeah, right, I know. Right? But like, is, you can buy Hulu on like Hulu is the same thing. Yeah, I know. But can you like um like if you with a smart smart um TV? Can, but yeah, to... they're all kind of hooked into it. So right. you get them so on a lot can. of smart stuff. Is that the standard? Hulu's right. the big American one. Right. So so, so Hulu, FX on Hulu is doing the um, the new series, I mean, that he's in charge, that he's created called Devs. So it's a drama sci-fi series. So it's kind of pretty cool because, like, uh, it's got Russian characters in it, right? So which is quite, quite different. Uh, European. I won't say Russian because it could be, um, they could be... German or Swiss or Dutch, but anyway, or Hungarian, Romanian, Serbian. Okay, so anyway, so because everybody gets just Europeans basically class as European Europe, right? But not actually distinct ethnic groups. Sometimes, for you know, when people talk about Europe. Anyway, sideline. <laughs> I'm just getting a footnote in my own brain, blurring to myself. All right, so basically, um, Devs D E V S is a com is about a computer engineer who investigates the secretive development division in a company which she believes is behind the disappearance of her boyfriend. I looked at um, the previews on it, and it's pretty good. So it's uh, a I was interested. Female lead? Uh, don't know. I guess I guess not. She's Maybe for a boyfriend. Yeah, but I mean. It could be anything because, uh, well, she's a nerd, right? 
So she, maybe she's not a strong female. Well, but yeah, there's because no people are action in there with the intrigue, yeah. I imagine. Well, it's it's drama. I haven't seen the trailer yet. Yeah, so you want to have a look? My could. Let's do a reaction. Well, you haven't seen the. You do a reaction to this, and I'll do a reaction Jeez. to the other one. I'm not very expressive. Right. It's not loading at the moment. Born in Moscow, MIT, then a failed startup, and then here. Hope Tell you. me about that. Is it tech genius? It's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. I'm scared. Of what? Us. So Kevin Spacey. So that's a short one. It's an amazing that's thing. Just... Where love will take like you. Two trailers in a row. The road you'll travel. So this is a shorter one. The lengths to which you'll go. There's an artsy angle to it so far. Mm. So it's it's quite tech heavy, I'd say, because I mean, it's about a development company, right? Mm -hmm. So sci-fi, thriller, drama, no action. So I guess it'll be low on action. They might build to it. Yeah. you never know Eight how episodes. these things turn out. Eight episodes. So um, they put out two yesterday. I was looking at the when it came out. So they put out two episodes yesterday. So there's going to be another two in. Uh, sorry, it's going to be weekly. So I guess the pilot is a two-hour pilot. Mm. Um, so they put the pilot out at the same time uh, and then weekly for the next six weeks until uh, mid-April so yeah I'm quite excited because I like his stuff like, Annihilation was good did you watch Annihilation? I, 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 I like I, I like good in the sense of like it was different it was definitely but, but different it was, it was very colourful I wasn't so sure about different the ending colourful is that always the best definition of a well, movie? <laughs> I just, I mean, like... Sometimes we as like, well, I didn't quite get the movie, but eh, it entertained me for yeah. half an hour or whatever. Well, it's... Did you, transcendence? Is it Transcendence? Oh, with, yeah. Uh, well, that, again, it went to, like... Yeah, into, like, thir uh, 3D or 2D world or something, and, it was like, and then you're like, wait, where's this going? It didn't have Johnny Depp? No, that was Transcendence. Who was the guy in that? And his head goes into the kind of internet at the end. Oh, that was that was that was, was the John. other that was Johnny Depp yeah. with another movie. What was the other one that was that came out at the same oh, time? Is that one I watched? Wait, one second. I know it did lose it's, me though. Is that a to be Hold on. The one so who's visiting us today? Is though? Got one viewer. Hello, whoever's there. And Feel free to throw up some comments. Yeah, you can probably steer the conversation. We've kind of gone off the rails already a few times. Interstellar. Oh, is that the one? Is that, he's the one building all those solar powered kind of things. Yeah, and he's sort of like Giant a supercomputer. Right, and he goes into like the wall and stuff into this. That's right. Yeah. Is that third dimension or fourth dimension? So it's oh, kind of. That's um. Oh, the guy without the shirt. All right, all right, all right. Um. Do you need me to go back in the oh, my, my Matthew bathroom? Matthew McConaughey. Different? No, I don't. Okay, cool. Yeah. 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 All right, all right, all right. Yeah, he was like, this, that's a different movie again. Transcendence yeah. was Johnny Depp, where he turned into like the like computer face. Yeah, I'm sure and basically, it. yeah. But it was weird. It didn't do it yeah. for me. I mean, did it do it for you guys? Well, I, I, I kind of li like the whole AI stuff. I do enjoy the AI stuff mm -hmm. because, because I, you know, I'm always thinking futuristically what will happen if this happens. Blade, Blade Runner was good. I love Blade Runner. Batteries not included. Posters Great right sci-fi. Yep. War Games. I can't remember. One of the Before first... I definitely watched it. One of the first internet sort of hacking... So we're going to do best, best sci-fi. Uh, mm, okay. yeah, I need some time to mull this Yeah, out. let's go back. So, so Devs is only eight episodes. Like 7.7 though. That's yeah, like so it's not bad. And that's only 208 people so far that's voted on it. So it's very new. It dropped yesterday on Hulu. So you can stream. If you got Hulu at home, you can stream it. Uh, the first two episodes, that is. Then it will be weekly. All right. So what was the other thing we hit on here? We've done one there. Into the woods. Talk about that. All oh, right. So let's talk about. Last week I was talking about Red Sun. Red Sun. I found it. It was sitting over there. I was moving things around today and I found it. So Red Sun came out last week. Yeah. And uh, um, did I? I'm not sure if I put the link up for the actual comic book thing on. Well, there's a cool air motion comic on yeah. YouTube, which is the one I've seen. And it was very cool because I didn't get the comics when they came out. 
I probably should pick them up. It was, now. Like, it was, I like, think it was two... a great series, but the motion comic was. It was um, two thousand. Yeah, excellent. it was six months each, and there was twelve of them. So yeah, fantastic. Uh, it came out in two thousand and nine, so it's on. I think it's on YouTube. It, it is on YouTube. Right. Definitely. So it's it's quite cool. It's uh, being a motion comic. It yeah, it's like images moving, right? Um, the actual images that are actually There's on the comics. Voices on there and too. voices, yeah, it's dramatized and everything. Some so effects. I'll I I'll, like I'll, I'll, I'll enjoy. There's that. actually some really good motion comics on YouTube. <laughs> so if you ever scrape in the barrel and run out of comic features, like yeah. have a look, I think there's a uh, Kick Ass on there too, which I really enjoy. But they do one of that. Well, someone did. Sometimes they're fan made, but they do a good job. What, one thing I do enjoy is fan made um, short films on of comic books, like mm -hmm. just just people just so much into it, and even you know like um being um like just film students. Yeah, right? some good just, Batman kind of ones yeah. on there. There was this. There was this. Uh, I'm not sure if I a while back I shared it, uh, where um there was a Joker. There's a Joker um, live action. Um, Feature length movie that these guys put together. Uh, Is that the one that ended in the carnival? I'm not sure. Um, know, there's a few Joker movies on there to be fair, but there were some particularly good ones. Yeah, there, there was this one that was very similar to oh, Joker I, Rising. Yeah, Joker Rising is what it's called. So it's been viewed 3.5 um, 7 million times. So it came out five years ago. Only so one million of those times with this guy. No. <laughs> I, I, I think I waste half of it, but it's quite it's quite different. It's very it, you know it's doing the same thing that um that thing way back there though where well, you can't see it there but you can see just his chin um, the Joker movie did it right um, and so which was basically just look at the behind the scenes of how it becomes the Joker and it was it's not bad for for you know almost it's hard to manage uh, your workload. Whoa. No budget. Um, no budget. Um, People just putting it together. I think that's basically what it was. Just people that enjoyed it, uh, loved the um, character, and decided to put their own movie together with their friends. Well, it's a nice thing being young. I used to make like little indie films, mm. pretty pretty amateur, but like you can have a lot of fun as friends yep. and make some semi decent stuff, some skits and whatnot. And now you just got phones, man. Yeah, well, you got excellent filming quality, and you got yeah. the people there. A bit more disposable income mm. for props. Yep, and 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 also. Most of the effects you can just do in phone. The last kind of feature, like indie movie I made, I made a horror called Bobby Knockers, which is like the Maces, and, and so sort of killing off my friends and stuff. Yep. And at the end of it, I get the obligatory boob scene. <laughs> Even in like an indie film that's only seen by like 10 people, we yeah. found two pretty young things that were willing to do a boob yeah. shot for an indie horror movie that yep. was filmed on a handy cam. <laughs> Boom. I don't know if uh, I could ever show it, but. There's some good acting in that one. Did that a couple of times. <laughs> um, I think we did a couple of um, short couple films. Of shot? No, a couple yeah. of short films before I went to film school. We did it here. Uh, but you got to admit, back in the day, a horror movie you had to have it. And so I was so happy that we had it's, it. It's obvious, eh? Like, I mean, gotta, to be honest, like, talking talk about this topic, right? It probably would fly these days. The standard, <laughs> the standard moment you can actually expect something, a nudity in a film, is about 20 minute mark. Yeah. But when not, you're about to nod off, because like, if you've seen as thousands of movies attention. that I've seen, you basically go, "Yeah, here it comes." <laughs> What's the time? Oh, yeah, it's about that time. It's a, it's the end of the first act. <laughs> Very exciting, like, oh, yeah, I know. Here, it's like, here, it's here, like, it's going to come here. So you just go, oh, that's and then you, my and eyes. not only that, you just go, "Well, was it necessary in that in that time in this movie, in the story?" And you go, oh, "It's no. a horror, absolutely." Yeah, but I'm talking about just general all movies. Oh. Anywhere that's above the M rating, it's always like 20 minute mark because that's where they try to keep you going to watch the rest of the movie. I guess. <laughs> like, what happens towards the end then? Yeah. <laughs> we got those 20 minutes in. <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, let's make sure it's actually better. <laughs> so, Red Sun came out. I like it. I think it's cool. Uh, you can, um, again, stream it. Um, it's not, it's, is it on Disney? No, it's, it's on Warner's. Yeah, we'll, no, <laughs> yeah. Warner, yeah. They've got all their own material now. Yeah, so it's it looks like a fun movie. Uh, and uh, plus, I like I like Red Sun and the story. I mm. really well, really love the story. They to the good story again. Yeah. A, a fine proof of point. Like if yeah. they're making movies, just use something that exists that's really yeah. good that gets a good feedback. Yeah. Why? That's the thing. Why so why? The yeah. Why rewrite 
um, like a, a movie script based on a comic book and not use the comic book that spaced off. And that's why you get all these problems with a lot of them. Um, the, um, you know, sometimes people go, well, I don't like it because of such and such, because it wasn't like the comic book. Well, why don't you just, the studios just make it like the comic book, like use the story from there. And uh, the thing is like the screenplay here is uh, J.M. Demetrius. Demetrius is, uh, is a comic book writer, all right? So he actually wrote the script for the Mark Miller written comic book. So, which I found kind of humorous because it's like, this is Mark Miller we're talking about, the guy who did kick ass, yeah. right? And what, and Kingsman? But, Nemesis. It, like, <laughs> he does, he does, they don't even go to him and go, hey, write your own, write your, his, we're doing this next. So, instead of us paying you, maybe he was busy, who knows, to write the script. In a sense, a comic book is a script, though. Right. Yeah. Which but, is an interesting thing. Was like how much work they actually have script. to do. Yeah, exactly. If they were just kind of making it into an exact mirror of the comic. Yeah. Not much, I imagine. Yeah, but then they, they pay a second guy mm. who to which add is, some words to add some more or words. Take some words out. Yeah, and it's like, why not just get Mike Miller to write his? You know, because knowing Mike Miller, he 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 works in a, such a um, such a very realistic way. You know, this is he, he's this is what he's thinking in his head. This is make a good movie. So this is what I'm going to do. And next thing you know, kicks the kick us is there. Mm. Uh, you know, but yeah. So Sam Liu, as I mentioned, like Sam Liu has been doing a lot of. Uh, I mean, on on the page that Sam Liu's been doing a lot of um, DC. Uh, we like Sam Liu. Yeah, a lot of DC. Um, Did he do direct that one animation? One, like animation. Let me just check. I was just going to check movie that. And stuff. There's a lot of great animated DC materials, probably mm. where they're winning out. They do yeah. fantastic animated so, features. So, let's see. He did Hush. Red Alert. Uh, Justice League Dark. Uh, Return, of, um, Return of the Cape Crusader. Bad Blood. These are all the animated ones. Throne of um, Assault on Arkham. Batman vs. Robin. That's um, yep. Damian Wayne, isn't it? Yep. I got um, that the other day. Awesome. Bad Blood. Justice League. I mean, I've uh, seen it before. Sorry, Young Justice. Um, year One. So he's worked I just on. Want to bloody yeah. watch all those in a row. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. Like, so you, the death of the death of Superman, the reign of Superman, uh, Justice League versus a Fatal Five. Yeah, um, the only one I'd skip is if Batman Dark Knight was there. Yeah, Batman and Harley Quinn, uh, the Killing Joke. Uh, you, so I love what he's oh, done, yeah. and I, I really enjoy enjoy um, Sam's work, and I think he's amazing as a animation director or director of animation mm -hmm. movies. And he's he's just he's top class, and I think um, it's just I'll, such I, good animation quality as well. Yeah, they just there's a top notch animating yeah. team. And I think he used to do it. Um, he used to do some stuff elsewhere, like other companies, and then this um, DC, uh, I think Warner's brought him over to do DC work, and he's just been stuck been locked contracted. In. Yeah, no, stick to what you're good at. Right, and work with the company that's letting you have free reign. And I think that's what he he's he, we're getting a lot of good stuff out of him because he's got a. Maybe he's got a lot of free reign because they know what the quality of work Maybe he does. Maybe he's got a passion for comics. Yeah. And the other thing is, the next one that's coming out is Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. That's on the 5th of May. So that's not bad. Like, it's like, what are we like? It, this dropped last week. So I guess, uh, I mean, it was released I last week. I've seen a lot of these, but. So oh. February, March, April, May. So three months apart. So Justice League Dark. Apocalypse War. Because there was that first Justice League. Right, that which I'm going to bring up here. So that was... I've seen that. So that was this one here. And that was about uh, beings with supernatural powers joined together to fight against supernatural villains. Uh, Did that you was, watch that? Yes. The villains are like... At the beginning, the, the violence right in the start that gets you gets you interested, that whets your appetite. My God. I didn't expect well, it. Well, now you so make cool. me want to watch it again, which I will probably do It was do excellent, tonight. wasn't it? That was just mm. shocking for superheroes. I wish I could bring up well, my IMDb because I would have rated it um, somewhere around about eight or nine um, because I've, I've got my own IMDb page to, follow, to keep me in touch with where I am with what I've watched for the last, so at least um, probably a couple of thousand, hundred thousand, probably maybe tens or twenty thousands of movies are not on there yet. Uh, 30 years is a long time to be watching movies every day, just about. Okay, being, so... This has got uh, John Constantine, Zantana, Jason Blood, also known as uh, Demon Etrigan. And the cool thing about Jason Blood and Etrigan is the rhyming. It is cool. They did that. And well. It's like, it's just, 
Yeah, if you read the Jason Blood comic books where he's in it, it's like the demon Adrian is just... It's, it's probably just the funnest so... bit of the character. Yeah. And he just gets real nasty when he's a demon and it's just yeah. horrible stuff is spurting out. And uh, yeah, I, I just, yeah, I, I just love, you know, and he didn't do that one. So that was done by Jay Oliver. And hey, once again, Jay and Mat De Matisse wrote the, um, wrote the script for that. The, um, what was it called? It's, sorry, the uh, animation script. Okay, so <laughs> the thing here is that Rosario Dawson was Wonder Woman in that. Well, she's a big comic fan. She's been around a lot. Didn't know that. I do now. Thank you for that. Now, the other thing is that in this one, she's Wonder Woman again. But what I was looking through, she wasn't Wonder Woman in Red Sun. That's because it would have had the Russian accent. Right. And she's, uh, Vanessa Marshall was Red um, Wonder Woman in, in Red Sun. Is Red and Wonder Woman Red Sun. Okay, so the other thing is Tony Todd. Candyman. Candy? Um, yeah. Right now. Candyman is a new movie, a horror movie that's coming out based uh, as a kind of a remake or the fourth movie in the or the third movie in the Candyman series, horror movie series by uh, Clive Barker. Have you got a mirror in your bathroom? Yeah, don't say Candyman three times in the bathroom. In the bathroom mirror, is it? Like more than three times? No, it's three times. Like Candyman, 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 and goodbye to your neck. Something like that. All right, so where are we? So Jason O'Mara, uh, Matt, Matt Ryan's going to be um, um, John Constantine. Is this a, That was the old one. Let me see if he's a new one. Sorry, my bad. Let's get to the new We're one. We're going through the entire cast. Let me, let uh, me get some of these names. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, cool. Right, so here we go. Oh, Matt Ryan, yeah. Oh, I mean, that is the definitive constant. Good on him for just continuing holding it down. Yeah. Like, I'm not even a, a huge... I like the character, but I'm not a big fan. But, like, he's excellent in that space. Mm. And I will watch and enjoy him throughout. Jerry O'Connell, wasn't he in Sliders or something? Yep. Good call. Okay. Um, oh, Rebecca. That's um, Rebecca. She was um, Mystique. Right. In the first X Men, as yeah, Lois Lane, and, um, and again Todd another comic fan, which is on their skin art program. Um, oh, what's it skin called? Up? The one where they do the body painting. Oh right, yeah. She's like, yeah. Uh, because Mystique was all body paint. She's a big fan, mm -hmm. and enjoys all the kind of artistic side. Yeah, so I'm looking forward um, to um, Justice League Dark Apocalypse War. So it'll be interesting because um, I'm not sure which um, comic it's based off. This one. Uh, unless it's the most recent one, I guess. I haven't read that one. But like I, I've always said, John Constantine is one of my favorite characters. And that's why I have the figurines. This proves it. A big and fan. I was going to hold this up when I was doing this. Is check you this out. Be an actor. Have you got like an oven glove? Or... Uh, I have. Um... <laughs> True. <laughs> All right. So this is number 281. Right. So this is why, like, it took me, like, 81. I only got this back last year. I mean, I only got a hold of it last year. So the reason I'm holding this up is because at 300, they, they knocked it off. Now, being futuristic in my thinking that I, that I usually am, this is a, a um, what would you call that? Um, a parent you know, prophecy? No, when they, like, when they cut it down, like, a bridge. A bridge. Oh, yeah, a bridge. Yeah, a bridge a version bridge. of my ladder, which is probably a bit longer than normal. But here goes. All right, so this is way back. When, what year was this? 2011. So nine years ago, my first first and last letter. Well, letter. first letter. No, first letter I actually wrote to them. Me? To a company, because I, that's how much I love John Constantine. And this series was the best. Okay, world. let's hear it. All right. Okay, so the, uh, to the Hellblazer team. Thank you so much for bringing me some, bringing me an awesome book to read every month. Can you guys make sure the current series stays at a great level of quality and maturity that we have been given for so long? The covers are awesome. I've been a great fan of Beasley since the Horn God days. Now that goes back to the 80s. Actually, early 90s, I think. Maybe, you know, I don't know. Justice League? No, sorry. 2000, 2000, 2000 AD. Late eighties. Oh, okay. he is a good artist. Yeah. So, he used to do, yeah, he used to do um, uh, the um, 
Silly Kiwi? Slain. Slain. Now he's English. You might be thinking of... Um... Anyway, continue. Anyway. All right. So, yeah. So, Home God days. Love the writing and enjoying the creepy side of John Constantine being brought out by, um, by Peter. And the interior art by Giuseppe is beautiful in a creepy way. Cool. So, that was like... I say where I'm from, right? And he goes... And I think this is uh, Karen Shelley Bond, right? Uh, writing back, or either Gary Greco. We're big fans of Beasley around here too, and don't worry, Biz, Camo, and Milligan are not going anywhere, and we'll continue to bring you the kick ass, kick ass, sorry, the ass kicking Constantine you love for as long as we can keep them chained to their um, drafting tables. Speaking of Camo's beautiful, creepy art, and they do this, um, the stuff that's coming up. Oh, the other, um, the other, sort, um, the covers so right. and then 19 episodes um issues later like it's gone and they decide to bring him into the dc universe and i was pissed because they wanted to make him young again well it's probably not the team's fault the team was probably yeah. very passionate and but, wanted to keep going but hmm? eight years after they killed vertigo they brought in people who didn't love vertigo they got they got rid of karen berger right female who had been there for bought in the best books ever. Like, seriously, if you look at Karen Berger's amazing um, history at, um, at uh, DC Comics, especially the Vertigo, where she worked as a chief, um, I think the editor there, under her, you've got books like um, that, like Preacher, Hellblazer, Watchmen, um, oh gosh. It's, it's big titles. Big titles, like big titles. Right, and uh, and then like they got over her, then Shelley Bond had to go as well. So two female creators had to go, like editors go, and they got a guy in who basically for some reason decided that he was going to put certain types of stories in that basically destroyed the whole imprint. So goodbye, Vertigo. Sorry, but and now there's no Vertigo, probably the biggest uh, uh, independent creator. You know, you basically get you could get the biggest names of creators with the best artists, and you'd be like, so what? Oh, Sandman. So what book would you recommend? Uh, Hellblazer, Preacher, Sandman, and Watchmen, and all from Vertigo, right? Anyway, so now most of those things are going over at Image, and uh, Image is putting all that good stuff out. Um, Okay, so that's Justice League Dark Apocalypse uh, Wars. I'm looking forward to that. Um, now, I want you to talk about this, because you, you probably read up on that. Oh, I so, don't read up. I've been following... Uh, the Spawn. He's, the been, Spawn he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's a fan of uh, Todd McFarlane. I, I've, I don't think I've... I can't remember if I've read all the entire series or not. Uh, the guy's the original nice guy. He's an amazing artist. He's a yep. legend. Like there's, there's very little to not like about Todd McFarlane. I I was giving him shit because he was telling me all about the movie coming, and then he's like all of a sudden talking him. about his sharks on his live videos at the toy fair, which are cool sharks, mind you. He's selling like um really natural swimming sharks. He's got had this giant one that was probably very expensive but cool. Um, and I was like Todd, what happened to your movie? Um, but then I saw a nice post come up on um I think it was Bleeding Cool or. And then just talking about some very reassuring, um, reassuring mm -hmm. kind of statements about it and how he's going to do it. He's always said he wants to direct it. And, you know, he wants to work with other good creators, but yeah. he wants to be at the helm and it be his vision. And he's just kind of reiterating a lot of what we all would hope. And so it's quite a clear message there with yeah. what he's stating. But in saying that, I had just about lost faith because we've been hearing about Sam and Twitch. Mm. On a camera that's Netflix or Hulu or whatever with Kevin Smith doing it, mm. and that sounded cool. And then this, um, so fingers crossed, yeah. But, um, yeah, exciting, bold statements. And I'm pretty sure people saw this when I put it up and yeah. it's been shared around. And it's exciting news. And Todd is approachable, he does lots of inspirational videos and responds to especially you. on Instagram, right? Hey. Facebook is his big on, on Facebook, Facebook as well. Yeah, you follow okay. him, he'll pop up and he'll teach you how to draw stuff, and he, you know, he comments back. And awesome. so, maybe not if you ask him a real direct question about something off tangent, yeah. he might not. Uh, but generally, he's a very friendly man and mm. um, very sharing. A cool dude. Yeah, so he's got to hear. Um, do you want to read that? Everybody in Holiday wants R rated. Hollywood? Everybody in Hollywood? I said Hollywood, didn't you I? You said Holiday. Oh. Mm. 
Whoops. You want to get a... I need a holiday. need a holiday. Everybody in Hollywood needs an R-rated dark comic book movie, and Spawn is at the top of their list. The phone calls are coming in fast and rapid. I've been talking to a couple of Academy Award people. I've got investors getting lined up. It's changed ever since Joker um, from, being beg from begging them to do it, um, do a Spawn dark and creepy to them asking. So basically he's saying with Joker and how it was a bit twisted and dark and so successful when he was pushing for that mm -hmm. and people weren't believing his vision yeah. that they're kind of coming on side. But that's a weird thing. It's like, we know when was the last uh, Spawn movie? Like, when was the first Spawn movie? Because I, oh, I mean, 90s. 98? Pull it up. Um, and 1997. Oh, close. Yeah, but I mean, that's like, what was that, like almost three decades ago? Two and a half decades? It wasn't terrible. It tried some new things, yeah, which was but, cool, and it had a wicked soundtrack. So I think a lot of the vision I had the was soundtrack. There. Yeah, it was a wicked soundtrack. Yeah, it was a good soundtrack. I actually found it the other um. Couple, but it could have month. been better at the same time, and it was that holding back that was the. Yeah. In my opinion, was I mean, yes, it had some more kind of simple special. You know, there wasn't so much CGI, and there. Oh, there was, was no but, CGI. It's at that point. Yeah, there, there was some basic, but like a lot of it was models and mm, things. Mm. Um, but it was really the violence where it kind of fell down a little because yeah. with the comics, of course, you'd expect a bit more violence. You'd expect a bit yeah. more punches. So Michael J. White and uh, John Lugiz Lugiz Lug Lugizamo, Lugiziaz I could say that in my head. I can say it. But like, <laughs> the pest. Yeah. Yeah. And Martin Sheen were in it. So they're not small names. Mm. Like M Michael J. White was a huge name back in the 90s. And like, he, he does a lot of different things now. He's in the indie scene. Uh, but of course, you know, John Lugaziamo is a big name still. Uh, he's, still he's been doing his own thing on stage. Um, I think it was last year. I think they talked about getting him back. Yeah, and Martin Sheen, as you know, he's a big name actor. Um, so that was from 1997. So that's an R18 movie way back when. And so when people start talking about R18 movies now, and they go, oh, it's only now that we're doing R18 movie. Deadpool's our first R18 movie forever. No, there was... Um, Spawn. No, Spawn was R. R? So they scaled it back. It wasn't as violent. So that uh, was, this, uh, I think for us would have been R18 here, wouldn't it? No. It, I it didn't, it didn't have the violence in it. So it mm. had some adult jokes in that. Um, okay. First R18 movie on the theaters in New Zealand was um, Ravenous, the cannibal movie with. Um, pull it up. Ravenous is a good, good movie. Robert England. Okay. Robert England. Um, um, the Finger Knife's Guy. Oh, um, uh, Guy Pierce. Michael the Third. It's coming back with such a good movie. If you haven't seen well, that, well, it's got Guy Pierce in it. The Aussie guy. Yeah, it was a fantastic. Was it that, Aussie... was, that was one of the first R eighteen was it mainstream movie? movies. I don't know. It was, I think it's filmed in Canada or something. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So he's saying it's going to happen this year. So does that mean it's filming this year? Um, well, because he's directing it, so I will be directing it. I, I will think be directing I, it. It's so. happening, so he's been yeah. trying to make it happen, and now there's that demand and that drive to do it, and people behind him. That, I, from what I understand with Hollywood, the budget's the thing that holds him off, the funding, the people backing you and believing in you. Mm -hmm. And if they're coming to him now and going, right, we want to throw our money at you, right. then it's all good. So, we're talking about budget and um, people believing in you, right? So, you look at Sin City, right? For, uh, uh, who's the guy who did Sin City? The first oh, one? Oh, well, don't put me on the spot. Uh, Robert Rodriguez, right? <laughs> so, historically, basically, he did the first, um, I think it was The Kiss or The Hit. The first, the first uh, segment of the first movie. He basically shot it himself on his own budget and in a, in a green screen. And he went to Frank Miller and said, hey, what do, you think? what do you think? And Frank goes, I like it. And they went and did it. Right? So he was able to go do that. So, but, but, the, and then Frank Miller did the second one. And so, but the thing was that Frank Miller went and worked a lot, you know, saw, watched how Robert was doing stuff and decided that he could do the second one himself. So I think if Todd was, I think people would believe Todd would be able to direct it. If Todd had someone as a co-director with him. I think he always wanted the Blumhouse guy. Yeah, so he's doing that. But the other thing is that you'd also want to have someone who wants to take the role of directing to do short films. Cut their teeth, as they say, right? Don't make this your big debut movie. 
if you haven't cut your teeth on smaller things. And this, this is what happens with a lot of um, even um, which, uh, comic book writers, right? Mm -hmm. Like they just want the big jobs without never being do having a history of oh, doing yeah. job writing, right? It's like Jim Lee on Alpha Flash. Yeah, give me the big job. It's like, well, prove yourself. Pr come on, man. Do, 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 the, do this half-ass character, make yeah. it popular. <laughs> but the problem is now is like, you don't have to do prove yourself now. You just have to get on tw Twitter and start complaining. All right, you have to complain. Oh, that, try that. Yeah, you have to complain. You have to be a certain, uh, yeah, certain skin color. In there. Yeah, you have to have a certain uh, skin color. You have to look a certain way and such on. And you have to keep hounding people until they give you the job because they're sick and tired of you. Uh, because you might call them a racist. All right? And that's happened. Honestly, that has happened. That's how someone's got a job in Marvel. I call this guy a racist and next day I yeah. was hired doing colors. Yeah, dude. Just joking. Obviously, somebody might make that <laughs> before it. But that's, what's, that's how people get jobs now in the, in the big two. And that's quite sad. I think it's like it's like you should be able to cut your teeth on something else before. Well, I, don't, I think people are still going through the old yeah. school way. There was a big period where people were jumping in and doing that, and they probably still are, but not mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah, there, there's still great things going on everywhere. Well, one person I know that's actually going to be working on a Marvel thing that's like basically doesn't have anything to do with comic books, but is doing show running. Why yeah. not? Anyway, so anybody can do anything now. the candy man. Yeah, you go do that. All right, so here's what um so what I've got next. I'm going to talk about anime and manga. One of my favorite mangas, while our co-host is away, is Jomangan. Um, hopefully it's backwards. Sorry, guys. Now Jomangan is one of my favorites. I saw it a while ago, and it's a uh, it's a really good anime. And, uh, but obviously the manga's there as well. So it's about, it's, it's a very, very strange uh, topic for manga. And that's why I think it's really cool. And that is gun running. Uh, of course, you've probably seen Black Lagoon, which is quite similar, uh, but they're, they're more like traders as such. But Gone on Gone is actually, uh, is actually about actual sellers and dealers of of uh, weapons like actual war zones they go and sell to both sides in a war all right and it's just quite very it's really interesting in the sense that uh, the characters are so well developed the characters are so crazy uh not in the crazy sense that they're just weird but they're in the, in, in the well developed you know and animation char animated characters but they actually are very good characters and they're really good so that's this is the book here um, so it's about a silver-haired uh, prison, uh, a child soldier, right? So the child, um, basically, they find all these kids uh, in a in a in a camp, and these and they find that this one kid has been trained to be killing, to be a killer, and so there's the animations out. Uh, if you don't want to read the manga, um, who's the manga by? Let me just remember. Figure out. Uh, the uh, story and art is by Keitaro Takahashi. And so that's Keitaro Takahashi, and of course, explicit content. Uh, mature, um, mature readers. Uh, it's from Viz Signature. Um, yeah, right on for mature. But it's a really, really well developed um, um, animation. Uh, I'm, I'm pr probably going to end up reading the manga. I had it for a while, just and I bought it because I like the anime. But it takes a while to get around to things. Um, yeah, so I, I, I recommend Gom and Gan. So it's spelled J-O-R-M-U-N-G-A-N-D. That's J-O-R, that's M-U-N-G-A-N-D, Gom and Gan. It's really good. And um, you won't, yeah, it's really, really cool. The other, um, the live action. I, I haven't read the, um, the manga or seen the anime. I'm not sure if there is one for this. But the live action for Library Wars. They made a live action. Yeah, they made a live action of Library Wars. It is so good. All right, so let me read you a synopsis for this. And I think there's a there's two movies out. I've only seen the first one. So in the near future, the federal government creates a committee to rid society of books it deems un, unsuitable. All right, isn't that cool? Like talking about censorship shop this week on about um, the Aussie guy. Over in, um, uh, you know, of course, in Australia, the senator wanted to censor anime, right? 
which would basically come on to being censoring manga as well. Because he wanted to classify it as not for children, which not all anime is for children, nor is all manga for children, just like yeah, not comics, all small books. Yeah. And so what he wanted to do, he wanted to say, wanted to ban it outright, censor it, order. But he got shot down in the sense that basically the the censorship board said, hey, dude, we don't censor stuff on genre. We, I thought that was like you playing music. It's a weird sound. Uh, so, yeah. I, almost, I just thought of Badoom. <laughs> Batum? Batum. Batum. You can talk about Batum. Right. So, um, yeah. So, instead of, um, yeah, instead of saying, basically they said, look, we don't classify things based on genre. We classify it on the level of content. Right? Okay, the right way of doing it. Yeah. Which is how everything should be done. On the content. N not on the material, right? So, because otherwise, a lot of, um, you know, like the Justice League movies will be classified not for kids. Well, I mean, will be banned, like sorry. big companies, so the big companies want people to review the tax of these other competition. They go, leave us alone, yeah. we're, we're all good. <laughs> it's just pointing the thumb, you know, finger one way and yeah. the other. Yeah. Same rule for everyone, I think. Yeah, and that's the best way to do things, is just make sure that everybody's, you know... If, if, What's good for good for the goose is good for the gander, right? Yeah. Like, stop trying to or say walk well, the walk, at yeah. least, you know? Yeah. So banning banning um, outright saying anime is bad. Well, kind of that, that sounds kind of racist, doesn't it? Saying that well, that that, uh, that one content. I, I suppose. Yeah, like, yeah. That, that I don't like to from, consider yeah. anime as Eastern, you know, yeah. like as it's just that. But yeah, to but, me, it's the same thing. But that's the other thing. Could he? Does he class anime as well as uh, manhwa, mm -hmm. which is Korean? Is that correct? No, exactly. Right? So, or is it? Or does he mean manga only? So if he means manga only, that's Japanese. So he, I don't even think he had his understanding of what is what. And so he just, probably, like I was saying on um, Facebook, he got shown something and, you know, some mother saw something their child was watching, right? And thinking that all of it's like this, right? Rather than saying, oh, it's Ben 10, like, kind of looks like anime, uh, you know, uh, or, you know, a lot of, what about, like, um, the, uh, one of the, was it Batman Japan? No, Samurai Batman or something like that. Uh, the movie that came out recently. Well, that can be, that's anime. Sam oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Sarah's a yeah. anime Batman. So, so um, yeah, so Jap Jap Batman Japan, I think it was something like that. So, could you just ban that as well? But isn't that English? American though? So Is he banning or censoring? No, he was basically saying ban it. Ban anime. <laughs> so, he wasn't saying censor it. He was like, yeah. So, it was, anyway, so they decided, well, that, you know what? We don't censor based on genre. We base sense, um, base, uh, we censor based on content. We'll support those sensible right. people. And we had the same thing here in New Zealand. We've had, I mean, like, you know, uh, we, we had to study censorship in, um, in school, and I mean, film school, where you decide, well, what is what can't. And, and I think we have, we're quite mature in, as Kiwis, what we, what we understand is watchable kids and what isn't. And I think the problem now is, a lot of pushes coming from Puritans who aren't who aren't mm. actually worried about the kids. They're worried about pushing through their own ideas of what. Well, is. probably the biggest argument in censorship was gargoyles. Getting yeah. that was a such a popular thing. It was huge, yeah. and they've talked about it coming back in some regard, maybe a feature film and mm -hmm. things like that recently because they had such a following. But that was killed by probably more than one mum but like one mum is the is a statement that everyone heard yeah saying my son was watching us so i'm you know disgusted and they they pulled her off like oh we're disney we don't do this yeah and that's probably oh, is, when is, it, is this disney show is... well that's when goggles of disney it was like oh, the right. most okay. badass disney ch you know, show yeah and it was in the height of its success and they pulled the plug on it only purely because of like one person's view yeah or, you know, the limited people's view. One Puritan, as you stated. Yeah. And and I think even Puritan means the wrong thing now. It's it's not really a... a it has nothing to do with religion. Like, before... Because in the old days, I'm like, you know, when Puritans went over from England to get away from persecution themselves, right? From England and from Europe being persecuted by... The um, Catholics. By the Catholics. So, they, they were the, called... The, they became the Puritans themselves where they were censoring other people. But now it's not about um, religion at all. It's just about your political view. And that's what it comes down to now. It's just about who shouts the loudest, yeah. really. <laughs> and so, yeah, I think if, if, you, if you decide to censor things based on your own, your own personal leanings, 
that's not a way to go to um, to dictate hey, to, to, to dictate to society. Oh, this is my sister. Yo, shouldn't even hit stand oh. there. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, so that's. Yeah. I don't like. To, yeah, I don't like to get my personal uh, family in there. Involved. Cut it now. I'll, I'll, I'll cut it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late. It's live. It's live. Yay! <laughs> Bad me. It was your fault for calling it. I, was, I looked and I made sure I, I did it. Anyway. anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, anyway, um, so yeah, I think I think the idea is that when it comes to anything with censorship, when it comes to consumption of media, you can't base it on your own personal opinions or your own personal biases. You've got to look at it society as a whole. And because not everybody's going to have your has your mm. viewpoint on things, it's important to have right? an open mind. Yeah, and not everybody's like yeah, not everybody's going to have your same viewpoint on things, and not and um, and you might have something that you're that you don't like that somebody else likes, but they might have something that. Have you that ever you had that like. where you've had something you really don't like and you don't feel comfortable with a certain type of person, and then when you actually meet them, it's not what you expected. Right. As a wow, I like this person for them, and yep. yes, I don't agree with the fact they're I don't know a biker or whatever. Yeah. But it doesn't matter in the scheme of things. But at face value, you're like oh hell no. Yeah. It's a bad dude. I wish they weren't around. I wish yeah. they didn't. You know. And and that's what uh, and I think that's where people are um, coming at with these things with censorship is I like oh, okay so this book is bad because it's about censorship of you know and the government's all about censoring things. It's bad because it's got yeah. a fourteen year old girl in underwear. Yeah, but that's not. But then on the back you go, ah, it's for you know older teens, so that could be eighteen year olds. Okay, it's telling right? a story. Or, I mean, I, yeah. I, I agree or with it. It could be mature point. readers, so they always have you know a logo at the back that tells you what age group it's for so you can't basically go well we should put a logo on our videos yeah it's it's well it's on 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 it's youtube easy. on youtube it goes to adults not for children because you swear i swear sometimes i don't fucking swear yeah and we talk about horror and stuff so but on live stream we, i met some Facebook cool young kids who like watch all the horror yeah, movies but facebook <laughs> yeah but facebook is for 18 plus so yeah. Oh. So, but the other thing is that um, now I've got on my track. That you know, not not everything that is anime is, is for kids, and not not every anime is not for kids. Well, You'd think that was obvious, but yeah. But it's, <laughs> well, we yeah, it's like gargoyles. everything. It's, yeah. Thank you, Alex. You're damn right. Let me see what else it's saying there. What? Are... So. Uh, Oh, uh, okay. The so the so the complaint. Oh, I'd be upset if there wasn't nipples in the letter. So, personally. sorry. So what the complaints about a letter showing his nipples? There's got, always going to be spa um, space cadets trying to force their opinions on others. If you don't like something, then don't watch it, listen, or read it. See, even that doesn't um, doesn't fly with me. If you don't like something, don't watch it. What I mean, well, I mean, but they're putting on a performance. So yeah, no, no, you no, got no. to view the whole thing. See, see, because people could say that to you when you sort of talk about when people um, are saying, "Well, I don't like what you've done with Star Wars." You go, "Well, if you don't like it, don't watch it." The thing there is, what it should be is, uh, should say, don't put your pure leanings. <laughs> leanings into what we you know, what but, everybody but else you is could, You could change the terminology and go, "I love Star Wars. You broke my heart." <laughs> that is very as, good and saying the same thing yeah because that's different that's different same too if you don't like, yeah you that's broke my heart yeah. like what the hell yeah so that's different too if you don't like it don't watch it because <laughs> I, I still like star wars yeah but i won't watch the last three ever again because i don't class them as star wars i class them as alternate world maybe they'll just cut out some of the bits that suck and then it'll be okay yeah well most of it sucked <laughs> yeah. That's a series of explosions. Yeah, just talking about sucking. <laughs> Doctor Who. Doctor Who. Oh, I liked. I liked her on TV. She. I haven't watched it yet, but she goes, "Do you want to write in my box?" And I was like, "Right on, lady." <laughs> Doctor <laughs> Who. Me watch one. Season twelve <laughs> destroyed Doctor Who for me. Oh come on! I I, I gotta say, like the one thing I don't know. Parallel know, universe. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> Goodbye. It's a okay. Twilight let's, Zone. Yeah, let's let's yeah. See, there we go. <laughs> Twilight Zone. Doctor Who. Twilight Zone. Well, that's what season twelve is. I I, I was okay with season eleven. There were some interesting shows. Season twelve just. You got a caveat. You got to go. I'm not sexist. It's got yeah, but I like Jodie Whittaker. 
You just hate her in that role. No, I hate what I've done with her in that role. I, I seriously, I've all, like on Twitter, all I say is like, I love Jodie Whittaker. I like her acting and everything. I don't like what they've written for her and Doctor Who, because like they could have they could have got amazing writers to write that series, and it would be freaking amazing. Like look at look at um the previous um show seasons right, Matt Smith um uh, oh gosh David, David Tennant, Tennant and I'm not saying that like the the writing the writing the stories were amazing. I'm gonna be no good at this because I didn't watch yeah, many of them. I I've watched all of them like I all of them. Watched it since the I actually watched one of the, yeah I watched one of the seasons twice because I was waiting for the next season. <laughs> I talking about next season, <laughs> Lucifer. Yes. Lucifer is coming back. Yeah. Right? I love Lucifer. I love I love Tom Ellis. Dude, seriously, I love Tom Ellis. He's he's an amazing he actor. Is. It's just so it's, enjoyable the if, if, if you if you haven't seen him in his other role, which was um uh he did he did this um let me just find out. He he before I watched, um, I think I w waited to, I watched Lucifer, then I went back to see, oh no, actually I found out who he was in Lucifer. Oh. And then you watched Go Girl. No, then I, no, I didn't even, see, I haven't seen this other <laughs> stuff, but I saw him in, um, I watched this, uh, this, he did this, uh, n um, night, um, uh, sorry, um, what's it? Something. Unlicensed Doctor. Like he, he, like before he got this role, uh, where is it? 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 No, not Miranda. Rush. Okay, so if you're hanging out, if you're really, really hanging out to watch Lucifer, and it's not out yet, obviously, watch Rush. All right, it's a ten episode series from England. Uh, it's about um, Doctor William Rush. Is not your average on call professional. He's not attached to any hospital. He's highly discreet. No matter the ailment, his clients must pay a cash-only premium. He's a um, he's a doctor for the criminal element. Well, that's cool. And he's really good in that role. And he and you can see him come across in Lucifer, and you can see why they why he got the job. Like he is so amazing in Lucifer. I, mm -hmm. Yeah, I um I read the t comic ser series twice. All right, um, and that's that's how much I love that that character, and um, and it's different. Of course, it's different to the comic series, but he, the the match. This is where I go. Well, it's totally different to the comic book series, and it's a character there. But I love the well, I love the series on its own, and I just I think yeah, it, it's my go to happy place. We we to say talk about, say to about a character who's called Lucifer, right? Um, it is, but like I mean, I I felt the yeah. same when I watched the show. And the last episode was it the last episode with the dancing episode? Yeah, what? I think so. It's been a while. Yeah. Uh, where are we? Um, uh, where are we? Where are we? The I Netflix have... series. Yeah. Was the last season. There is there's this whole episode of dancing, or was it just a start of it? I think this. I can't remember if it's a whole season of dancing or it's, uh, like episode of dancing. Or it's just there's an intro dancing intro. It was so good. They had lots of clips. Right. They had a bit of a meta commentary as well when they're coming back. They introduced mm. themselves on there, showing that you know as their characters yep. introducing Lucifer getting back introduced. That was real clever. Mm. I, I yeah. I just um, they were very okay. enjoyable characters. They also announced. Um, I think they might be getting a few more of um, seasons. I think they were talking about, and so I'm quite excited about it coming back. And I'm and I was. You know, all, I'll be on my watch list. Yeah, sure. I was. I'm not sure if I'm repeating myself. I think I might be repeating myself from last week, but you know, I waited. Yeah, I, I'm. I've been hankering for it, and I was so glad that Netflix picked it up because there was a huge, huge mm. um, um, movement on on Twitter to get them to Netflix to pick it up. Well, it's exactly like gargoyles, but nowadays you've got a bit more voice, and so they yeah. they caused it to come back. Fantastic. Yeah. Um. Like we said, Castlevania is going to be out. Season three is going to be out soon. Uh, I have to rewatch. Ravi Shankar, you said Ravi. Abby. Abby Shankar. Eddie. 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 Adi. Adi Shankar. Mm. Right. So and Warren Ellis is the writer on that series, um, which I'm, yeah, it was really well done. Yeah, I don't even know it was based on a um, video game. 
when I first saw it, I was just like, oh, this looks really cool. What rock have you been living in? Well, it's been, I mean, I, I, afterwards I found out, right? <laughs> After watching it. Oh, um, so what, was, what else do I have about my list? Oh, I was going to get you to talk about um, our, our Kiwi artist, our Kiwi comic book creator. You know Ant? I've met him. Right. I'm, I'm so do you know do any of his work? Didn't he help out in Bro Town? There you go. So I wanna I wanna like um yeah, push Ant's work this because push a Kiwi nice guy at least once once a month. So uh, Ant Sank, Shelling Burning, really cool. I enjoyed it. It's been out for a while. Uh, but he's also done quite a few other stuff and books are all over the place. I did a, another movement today. Moving things around. Um, Dharma Punks. You'll probably find it at the library if you haven't read it. And probably, you know, if you haven't seen it in the bookshops. Uh, you, and also, this should be in the library as well. Um, now, was that put out by Adrian? With his, uh, with his print? No, that was put out by Harper Collins. So, um, I also know that um, I, I mentioned um, in 2018, he had a book out uh, through... Adrian Knurr. Uh, no, he did a um, he wrote a book with another um, sorry he did the artwork for another writer uh, kind of, um, something about ninjas go go ninjas anyway that's the end that's the end of the title but I um, but I can't remember the first one um, but yeah it's um, some it's about some futuristic character and, and ninjas but yeah so a, um, Ant Sang follow um, you know hit him up on Facebook um, it is cool. A lot of these guys are approachable. Like he's always yeah. at Armageddon's and things. Um, yeah, hopefully he's there this year. But he designed Brotown characters. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, so I've got that book, um, annual somewhere. But the other thing I want to put up is Adrian's work. Uh, Adrian's uh, publishing company, uh, earthsand.co.nz. Earthsand. Uh, this is Moa. Have you read James Davidson's book, Moa? I have not. Yeah, so... It looks like bone. Yeah. Fun. So this is a collection of the work. And uh, Taonga in trouble. When a sacred Maori treasure is stolen by the distardedly Otto, it's up to the Moa Rangers, Kiwi Puku Puku and Possum Von Tempsky to return the Taonga and save the day. So right along with Kiwi and Possum on their side-splitting adventures battling mythical creatures and dangerous hunters in colonial New Zealand. This treasury collection... Um, contains all five issues of Jane Davison's acclaimed comic series Moa, due, uh, sure to delight readers of all ages. So it's all readers, all ages book Moa, and like I said, Bone looks looks pretty much like it, doesn't it? And the colors pop, and it's color, right? Hardcover color. Uh, we should have a couple of these at Plunge, uh, or else uh, bookshop, hopefully, or else go see um, Adrian's um, site, earthsend.co.nz. Uh, and that's James Davidson's book, uh, Moa. All right, so just want to, I forgot, I realized when I was reading that I didn't read the blurb on this one. So this is like old China like you've never seen before. Shaolin Burning is an exciting modern take on Kung Fu mythology, a fusion of punked up street culture and Chinese tradition. And so when the Shaolin Temple is destroyed by the Empress Army, only five monks manage to escape alive. Also, the legend goes. It's worth checking out, and obviously it's been out for a while. Um, and like it says here, award-winning designer of Brotown. Um, and I think I've seen it at the library for us locally here. So, and obviously it'll it'll be in your graphic uh, novel section. And um, well, I yeah, with libraries you can, um, if they don't have it, you can request that they stock books. Yeah, you, so. and that's the other thing. That's a good thing to mention because yeah. If you if you if your library doesn't have graphic novels, they have budget for stuff, right? So just make sure, just even if you just want to read it yourself. But the cool thing is, if you request it, other people get to read it as well and get to enjoy it and get to know who's um you know who our local creators are. Um, okay, so the other thing I was going to mention was last week I was talking about uh, about the design work on. I think this is the last thing I've got to mention. I think there might be one more 5G. Somebody asked a question last week about 5G. And I mentioned about design work. And I think the logo design on this book. And um, Tokyo Ghost. Now, Murphy, 
Uh, Sean Gordon Murphy's got, um, people have been after him this week, as I mentioned on, uh, on Facebook, uh, because he got a job at, um, at DC Comics as a editor, um, of his own imprint. So some, some person out there didn't like him and started posting stuff from 2017 and, you know, going, going after this person saying such and such and such and such. And all he said was, there was that he wanted that um, dead people, a dead character to stay dead. Like this is the, this is what he's going to bring. Fair. You know, this is what he's going to bring to his imprint as part of the Murphy, um, Murphy verse he's talking about as part of um, what he's going to bring to the um, DC comics uh, that art, that work, that books get um, put out on time, uh, that customers are put first. Um, and what was the other one? So it's, books get put on time. Uh, Customers are treated first, you know, professionally. Uh, what was the other one? Um, character stayed dead. And there was a couple others. And next thing you know, he's getting attacked because that this really clear, nothing wrong with anything. Because that's what I, you know, I think that's really good for somebody like in DC to say, hey, we're going to do this, we're going to do that, do that. Right from, you know, from the start. Because then you know, you know. Hey, it's just a battle plan, really. Yeah, or... this is what our aim of our mission is, right? This is our mission, this is our statement. That's like when we do plunge, we go, the whole point of plunge is our story is our way. That's all there is, so that's 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 aim of us, right? For me, when I was doing it, I was saying, what's our mission statement? Our story is our way, right? Um, so, you got, you got, is that a, is that able to take a, um, a standard charger? Oh, no, it's all good. Okay. Man. Right, it's running out of battery on his phone. That's already shit. Okay, so let's talk about um, while we're on DC. Let's finish off with um, AT and T and five G. As you um, as you might have noticed last week, uh, Dan Didier got fired. Yeah. On the spot, no hello, no goodbye, no see you later, mate. Uh, bye, out the door. And he was the guy in charge of the five G. Now. There was a huge backlash on 5G. And remember I was talking about how they were going to ch change yeah. up everything, going to hack, hack everything to pieces like they did with Marvel, all new. What was it? All new, all what? Marvel? All different. All new, all different. They're going to try what Marvel did and failed. But then Didier thought, I can do it better. And then they said, there's a door. And the weird thing is AT&T have a 5G network, right? <laughs> they're going to bring in. So they're kind of like, you know what? You guys have a 5G thing going. We could do a 5G comic book series. And what we're going to do is replace all our iconic characters who have been around for 80 years, who everybody in the frigging world knows. We're going to get rid of them. Put them on the sideline. Make them old. Make them, you know, they're too old to do their job. Batman isn't Batman anymore. You know, Clark Kent isn't Clark Kent. I should say Bruce Wayne isn't Batman anymore. Clark Kent isn't Superman anymore. Hal Jordan isn't. Uh, you know, Green Lantern or whatever. So we're going to replace them with all new, all different. Cool. And they said, no. Because they were like number crunching. Game. So where'd you get this idea from? And then probably went, oh, you know, like in 2015, oh, uh, Marvel tried it. So how'd they go, Dan? Ah, ah. Not too well, Mr. AT&T. Not too, not too well. And so you're going to call this 5G, are you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying my QE humor. Yeah, I'm going to call it 5G. So is that like the same name as our, you, are you doing it because of our t uh, telecommunications network? Yeah, yeah, I thought I'd kiss some ass. And they said, that's okay, buddy. Sorry, Dan, video. Here's a piece of paper, bye. So that's what happened, and now, Obviously, just now, the only publisher they have is Jim Lee. Well, that's good. And Jim Lee went, I'm out of my league. I've been a co-publisher co uh, co for so long, for almost two decades now, right? 15 years. I need his help. So he gets Sean Gordon Murphy in, and I reckon Sean's going to be amazing at the job because he runs his own school. He does. He teaches comics, he teaches art, and he is I've been reading about, like, I always do this about, if I like people, I always go and read their stuff and about who they are. So, and, you know, he did this, this is, 
his amazing art style like this is the cover of um tokyo ghost like i said if you don't if your library doesn't have it request it and you know just he's really detailed he's got his own unique style and he's the artist on this one and the book the write-off that's written with remander do you know about remander while i'm on this i'm familiar with him but not I can yeah. throw I, I think, facts out there. Uh, Rick, remember... They do Wolverine. At some he's, yeah, he's worked on that, but there's something else I just noticed when I was looking through... It's familiar. He did something in Why is this... Um, um, you do some indie stuff. Yeah, that's that's from Image, so that's his indie book, and that was really that was really well yeah, done. That's familiar. So there was something I, I, um, I saw on IMDb, Deadly class. Now, oh. yeah, so he's had his own uh, work put into a TV series already. So Deadly Class and also a um, couple of his work. Oh, I've got Fear Agent. Yeah, Fear Agent and um, Dead Space. He's, a, he's been a writer on that. That's right. But something you guys might not know, which is in post-production. The Last Days of American Crime by a very little indie um, excuse me indie production um, comic book company called Radical Comics and um, geez, uh, the reason I found out about him was because I was thinking about Power you know um, the Bendis uh, TV series that came out a couple years ago uh, and I was looking up Shelter Shelter Cop Copley, who was in, um, what's that, um, that he's, he's a um, South African guy, Afrikaans guy, who was in the, um, give me a little more, <laughs> District 9, District oh. 9, right, he was in District 9, so I was looking up, the main guy, yeah, the main guy, oh. so I was looking up his name, and it was like, oh, this, and so Rick Romander, the guy who wrote that, um, uh, and the other one, Deadly Class TV series. He's got his um, his um, yeah a feature film being made on on that um, three issue comic book, but each issue was fifty nine pages long, so it's hundred fifty page. Um, so it's an like hour and a half to two hour movie. Two hour movie, the last days of American crime and post production. So not That's planning, but actually they're, they're actually you know. It's having his day because yeah. that fear agent they're making a TV show of as well. Okay. I'm sure of it. Let um, me go back. Let me go back. Look it up. You know how like they picked up Miller's stuff. Like yeah. I, I believe, pretty confident that they're working well, on something at the moment. Yeah, TV but, series. Yeah, action sci-fi. Oh. So yeah, I know something about cool. Rick Remender. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So the thing about the last days of American crime. This is the. Um, this is synopsis on it. So in the not too distant future, I'll get you to read it. Oh, I might say holiday again. Mm. In a not-too-distant holiday in the future, as a final response to terrorism and crime, the U.S. government plans to broadcast a signal, making it impossible for anyone knowing to, um, knowingly commit unlawful acts. That's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. It's like the reverse... It's like the reverse of the purge. That's what I was going to say. So it's a reverse <laughs> of purge. As you know, the purge is basically what you have 12 hours. Yeah, where you can one do... day a year for a nice festival, yeah. lock the doors. I don't like how they... Um... They went the pre purge thing, whatever it was, like, oh, it's about racism. That's how it started up. I was like, nah, you guys could have done so much better. They, they could have, well, yeah. You, could, you know, you could have just. They made, keep was, on making they bits of it. Yeah, that. they could have just said, we're, like, the whole thing was there's so much crime happening that we had to, I say, we're going to either put you all in jail or start shooting but all I of you. Or it's anything. more about, I mean, like, rather than the baseline of how it was, it's that uh, human nature again. Yeah. So it's like hostile. It's just like how dark is the individual if yeah, you kind of get like let hostile. off. Yeah, but it scared me because it's like real, you know? It could be real. Yeah. You could go to one of those strange little foreign towns and then people go go missing. It's not well, too it's, impossible. It's not too impossible because people do that all the time anyway, yeah. kill people. Yeah, but I mean like for that, but you know? For, like, yeah, and for so game. To me, the purge yeah. is similar. It's that kind of human nature being switched off. Mm. Or switched on. I guess. Because what? Yeah, it could be switched on because people wouldn't normally do that. Would be switched on, be turned on. Yeah, 
True. <laughs> yeah, like, like not. Yeah, there, there's just people that wouldn't be, um, you know, wouldn't do criminal acts, but it will go. You know, I can, I, I get freedom to well, do the, it. Yeah, so well, it depends now. what the taste is. You know, like you yeah. might try something and then be shocked at what you did, and or you might go, oh, that was actually yeah. surprisingly easy, and I don't have to clean up the mess. That's why we have ratings. Because we don't want to get, like, the whole thing about, like, not introducing children to um, violence and, um, you know, horror at a young age. Because, if you know, and then you go, well, you know, what if they do get introduced to it? What if they then, then such on? And we know that most hardcore criminals, you know, were doing and got away with doing crazy things when they're young because, oh, they're just in kids. And you just let them get away with it. And then next thing you know, they're... Just kill the neighbor's dog. Yeah. And carry on. Um, I think we mentioned everything, mentioned everything. Uh, we didn't touch on Watchmen. Well, do you want to talk about Watchmen? I don't honestly know much about Watchmen, the TV series. Other yeah. than I wanted to watch it. So, like, a lot of, like, myself included, like, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Watchmen. I actually have the absolute, very expensive, uh, you know, so while well back when I could afford to buy it. Because I really love it, and I, not only that, I have the actual. I paid a you know quite a bit for a while back when I could afford to um, lithographs of each. I think there was like a eighteen different covers they had out for it, like variant covers, French covers, black and white covers, cards um, that I was able to purchase. That you know they were about thirty, forty years old now. But the thing is. Watchmen is one of the, and every, you know, you guys, if you know anything about Watchmen, you already know this, but I'm just want to let you know, it's one of the biggest graphic novels ever, right? So if you, if anybody talks about, like, what's, you know, what do you get somebody who's a, who's an older person and wants to get the comic books and not a child, you know, and so on, and you say, well, Watchmen, start them, you know, because the, the, there's so much. In, intelligence behind what is happening in, in, in the book that that's why it's still and it will still be number one top thing for the next hundred years because that's how big it is uh it's like frankenstein right it's a it's like a, a bram stoker's um dracula is it dracula what's it called dracula oh yeah the original i think so yeah so something like that it's like it's 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 its own little thing and you can you know what are, and so when they start touching it and they you know they, they, all they're trying to do and and we you know whenever people use names of things and this is the thing and they make their own thing oh, yeah. they they do it for money it's usually money it's it's like it's like you know one one all the respect and the the um the fan base that comes along with that to do that and so you know to give them to make the money transfer over sorry i'm not saying it right but basically they want the fan base right like mm. star wars so we've waited for like what 20 years 15 years for star wars and we were hoping that a hey, leia's alive luke's alive um han's alive uh, uh richard d williams R D. yeah yeah, yeah, Lando's like, Carousian. why don't we all put, you know, we'll, hey, let's, why don't we all, they're going to put them all together, right? They're going to put them all together. So the expectation's there, and we're going to call it that. So it's the same thing, like, so you have the base there, you have all these people committed to this. And so what happens is that, like, a while back, I think it was 2000, 2010, maybe, maybe earlier than that, they did a before Watchmen series in comic books. They had top name people write it. And uh, some of them were writing it because they knew if they didn't write it, somebody else would come and write it, which was lower tier. And they even said it. They said, look, if I don't write this series, they'll just find someone else who will do a bad job on it. So I'm writing it. And not because I want to write it, but because, you know, because of that reason. Others were like, yeah, I can get my name on The Watchmen. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get my page. Or the other ones were like, I'm going to get my paycheck. But I own the books. I think I own a couple of the books, like the single issues, but I still won't read it. The Before the Watchmen? Yeah. I still Who's want, the, the voice? The, the, the main guy, the, uh, oh, the god guy? Because they, his miniseries is actually pretty cool. I mean, no, it's not. Was was he, he, yeah, was he Mantis? Yeah, yeah, his like, lead-up was his prequel, like, and mm. like, traveling the world and figuring out he's the smartest man. 
It was mm-hmm. actually a really cool like lead okay. up story. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I didn't yep. read all the rest, um, but I'd recommend that personally. I enjoyed that. There you go. That tale. I thought yep. that was well done. Um, one reason why I want to watch the TV show is because all the different characters where they touched on, like Mothman yep. and the, um, the Hood of Justice. Yeah. Hood of Justice, I'm sure. Right. That's what it is. I want to see more of them. I would have loved to see yep. them. Yeah. So, so what what was happening with that sh- series was that they were really, really talking it up about how good it was, how good it was, but they found that the ratings were just dropping. and But not only that, the, the audience members they were dropping. They were killing the fans. They were killing the fans. <laughs> yeah, slowly, like each week like that was coming out, fans were dropping off. And it's not my watch. So so yeah. So basically, you, you you got the hype from people going, oh, this is you know I can't wait to well, see you got, this. You got hope. Yeah. You got bottled hope. Yeah. So you're like expectation, 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 and you're like wait. disappointment, disappointment, disappointment. Yeah, and every, and people are going like this isn't this isn't this isn't. And I'm like wait. Do you know much how about many, the TV show? How, Was there much violence? Like I I'd, I'd hope there's a well, bit of violence in it personally. I don't know. What I knew was that it was it detracted from what the book was, and that's the thing about like the like the book, right? It's like the Bible of superhero comics. But well, that's the thing. If you wrote yeah. ten Bibles, you probably diluted the Bible too. Hmm. And but does the Bible need to be diluted? Probably. Like I, I had this, water in my Bible every but, night. But this, yeah. So this is the thing. It's like, do you, you know, do we want the absolute Watchmen being diluted? To buy like TV shows, by by you know, you know by uh by before Watchmen, after Watchmen, uh, and this is the other reason. Oh, I forgot to say the Doomsday Clock, right? Mm-hmm. The Doomsday Clock. The this is so this is they accidentally put an L on the title. Yeah, so they they <laughs> they put the Doomsday Clock into the DC universe now, right? This is you know when something's failing is. Like when it was uh, weird. when 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 you bring in something that's got nothing to do with that universe into that universe, mm, it felt very forced. It's like, yeah, it's like shoehorned, right? Yeah, it's like it was because yeah. guess what? We're not making enough money on our own stuff, so let's use somebody else's stuff who doesn't like your company, who doesn't want you to do anything with this with their work, but you're gonna do it anyway in spite of it all. And that's the history of Watchmen. And hey, everybody's got their own opinion. Funny thing about you know how you yeah. built Star Wars up as a comparison. Yeah. I saw a funny meme and it goes, um, Pedro Pascal. Yeah, yeah. And, and is in hospital, is in critical yeah. condition oh, sorry. because he's been carrying the whole Star Wars franchise on his back. Yeah. And I thought that's true. I'm not sure if I if I re- rethink that. Yeah. So I, yeah, I thought that I, was I that was that. yeah that was, that was really cool, and I was like. <gasps> And then I was like, oh, jeez. So like a news like, out of it. I thought, that's a yeah, meme like, right there. Yeah, this lady goes, oh, you almost gave me a heart attack. And I said, like, oh, and I was like, yeah, me too, but not that. That's someone too, saying, screw you, Disney. Yeah. <laughs> but that's, yeah, so, I mean, that's basically it. I mean, like, you're going to, you're going to, you're always going to have, you know, you're going to have a loyal fan base, but if you abuse uh, that, that loyalty, by uh you know by watering down or by um, putting your own things into it that that you're not this is a weird thing talking about that disney and stuff rian rian johnson like last jedi did he do the last jedi i can't remember which was the middle one that he worked on anyway so he basically said um you know i'm not really worried about the past what is you know all the I'm that's not even a bit foolish. yeah I'm like not worried let's about do a the whole law spin off movie that's got nothing to do with the yeah. other ones though. yeah let's, that let's, would make sense yeah so I'm not worried about what's going on with the law or anything like that and you know and um, and the other thing okay last bit no more after this final rant I'm I'm sure you guys have seen the uh, what was that the whiteboards the Disney whiteboards they cracked me up. Nowhere did it say, "Let's go back to what made does what made Star Wars work," on that whiteboard. Yeah, there's a, there's a, like they did this whole uh, writers' room. They got all these new writers to come in uh, for Lucasfilm to um, workshop this whole new. Um, uh, I think it's like Rise of just Jedi, it's Jedi or Dark Jedi or something like that. It was Luminescence, Luminous. Yeah, so this new whole percent thing they got with Disney uh, called Luminous. Luminous. And nowhere on it said that so I could think of. Cover it. Yeah, but no, where they're going, 
in the future. So it's a really big deal because... There's a phrase for that too, though. It's like some things can't be unfucked. There you go. See? <laughs> yeah. But, but yet it can be. You know how? <laughs> you go back to the start and you work with what worked. What would be good is that they killed some that. of the characters people hate. Let's let's drag back Jar Jar and have him like dragged in chains and like pulled apart or something. Mm. Like at this, I'd watch something. It'd suck me. And it could be in a pod race and he could be chained between them. No, I I, I, I love I, to be honest. I thought Jar Jar was fun, and I think because they did it because you wanted kids in it to watch it and the Gungans. And I think they overdid him. Yeah, like, it was okay. Yeah, but and that, that was the whole thing. He wasn't too many scenes. He was kind of forced in, and all of a sudden you got this nattering yeah. nitwit in the back of the pod or whatever. Right. So if you have a person who's always in your in your ear going stuff, chattering away, you don't want that. And that's what it felt like. And I guess that's why people don't like it. So anyway, so the whiteboard markers, uh, whiteboard um, board, had all these name things on it. Dinosaurs, all part of it. The Palpatine. Uh, <laughs> I just, yeah, I just don't know where they're at with this. And I think, like, when I'm writing a story, I come up with an idea first, right? And then I work at, like, where I'm going to take that idea. I don't sit down and go, I need a black guy in here. I need a white person there. I need a, a Chinese person there. I need such and such person here. I need that alien to be there. On there and there and there I don't do that and most writers don't do that I don't know if even Stephen King does that and he's the freaking greatest one of the greatest horror writers in the world he probably wouldn't no because <laughs> you know and and you don't that's not how you you don't workshop a story you get a, a person comes with a story and goes okay so this is my this is my idea of a story and then you go cool so what happens where and when and when you go start middle finish okay cool so hey man i could i could i've got some issues with dialogue and stuff what do you recommend dialogue um, i need to wrap it up here on the sink how about seeing that you don't start with characters first you come up with an idea first and what they were doing was current coming up with topics mm. topics to insert yeah okay what should we do here we'll put dinosaurs here we'll put this here and the dinosaurs really stuck out to me but they put a whole lot of stuff and Oh, I, I, I... How do you even have dinosaurs in Star Wars? I mean, they, they're creatures all big lizards and things anyway. Yeah. It seems a bit redundant. Yeah, there's those things that run around. Yeah, look at all these crazy yeah, animals so... and creatures and yetis and whatnot. Like, yeah. they, they don't need dinosaurs. I mean, a Rancor is kind of a dinosaur anyway, yeah. isn't it? With big arms. I guess that's the difference. There are so many things in there. I don't know the character name, sorry, but I know. But, like, what's on with the chain? And they're right. This is really big. Although in the Mandalorian, no, um, in the um previous three, Torn, torn Torns are the yeah. the ones with the horns that look like kangaroo kind of things. Yeah. where you cut open and yeah. oh, spoilers, but there's spoilers. but you there's cut other open ones, but, there's, but the there's other ones, right? So there's there's so many there's background Hoth characters, Wampers, the big... yeah, but I mean, so the the Star Wars universe, even before the last three came out, or any that Disney got a hold of, mm. is so vast. Like, That's the thing with that so vast, you don't vast. need to even go into dinosaurs. You've got so many random creatures just, and, and aliens and civilizations. You, you basically just go to the comic books. If you if you can't do anything, go to the comic books. The pictures are there. They, they, there was no comic books, so they had no choice. Yeah. Or they had no novels. <laughs> there was no novels, no comics. There was no writers. Comics. There were no, no Star Wars writers. Yeah, there was nobody there to help write these, these you know, to lo rely on for information. Disappointing. George Lucas, Lucas had passed on. <laughs> he was. He was. No, he, his, spirit, his, his spirit ghost. Yeah, his spirit ghost wasn't <laughs> with us no more. You can't have Luke. You don't anyway. have him off. <laughs> well, that's that's me ranting off. So you signing off. Did we do enough comics day? We've done graphic novels and. Is movies. comics day coming up? It's coming up in a what's, month. What's we going do, on with comics? Is it next month? Um, April. What are we? March? No, May. May fifth is it? Um, comics day. Free comic, oh, free, I'm not yeah, free, sure. Yeah, free comics day is um, May 5th. Well, shout out to Jeremy at Arkham Comics. Yeah. Um, put up a great deal with Valiant Comics that I picked up. Kindly let me pay it off because, yeah. although it might seem like I can buy lots uh, <laughs> over three weeks maybe. Yeah. Um, but I was excited. I'm I'm keen to back Valiant. Bloodshot's yeah. not far away. Hey, talk, uh, and there's let, more coming. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, watch the reaction. We can finish with this. Okay, yeah, we'll finish with that. 
<laughs> you haven't got a virus. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, uh, I think it's weird. Like um, I've I've re refixed my computer that I hadn't fixed for so long, and so I think um, it's playing up now, but it wasn't playing up before, which is kind of weird. But anyway, so I mean that, uh, that Valiant Hall, like I mean I honestly think is untapped. You know, there's potential in Valiant. I mean it might not be huge potential, but any successes are gonna be some momentum. They've been a long time mainstay. They had some great characters. PCs are weird, man. Um, they get viruses so quick. I've I haven't been on a PC for ten years, and now so I'm pretty grateful for it. So thanks, Jeremy. Okay, so blood spot, um, blood shot. <laughs> yes. Blood spot. I was thinking of the red dot. <laughs> no, I, I was thinking of um, Jean Claude Van Damme. All right, All so right. this is, I've seen the first one, I haven't seen the second one. It's good because it's quite different. Okay. Sequence. Okay, well that's not it. Gina, oh, is this a set? Mm -hmm. is what is this place? I'm you, sorry. You're getting the reaction of a glitching computer. <laughs> yeah, it's really annoying. Oh, isn't yeah. it? What's his name? Soldiers like yourself. The Aussie. The first Memento, Memento. Didn't ass. know he was in it. That's cool. With the technology in your veins, you have an army inside you. It will not only make you stronger, it will heal you instantly. That is good graphics. Now tell me, do you remember anything? Oh, it's not. Where are you going? This is why I don't like PCs. Oh, the, the bit of the trailer he got to experience firsthand right, before <laughs> he got a million messages on that. Right, Comment section. This is so not cool. <laughs> but fantastic. I am super looking yeah, okay. forward to it. Um, I wish we had tickets to give away or something. Why would we have to give away a ticket? Get your own tickets. It's that good. <laughs> Well, next time round, yeah. I'll reach out and try and uh, test some promotion where we can give a bit back for food. What do you think is real? Sometimes I and initiate sequence. Who's a character? I think it's Chinese. I think because I see more characters than meant to be in it. Um, sure about that. I hope it's not too loud, guys. Oh, I like that one. That's cool. That was a good shot. That was good. I'm excited. Not long to wait, so everyone get excited. It's gonna yeah. be badass. Sorry if it was too loud and you guys switched off on that loudness, but I yeah, I, I'm so excited for this one movie for this I year. I find Vin Diesel oh, quite flat, but I, in that it seems like he's doing a pretty good performance yeah. to me from the bits I've seen, and it looks like there is a bit of character stuff there, and he yeah. he seems to be delivering, in my opinion. I I've always liked like I've always said before I've always liked Vin, Vin Diesel. I really like the uh, him. The, um, way back, X, uh, Triple X, uh, way back with, um, with, um, Street Sharks. Um, I don't remember Street Sharks, uh, but, um, <laughs> was it, um, Chronicles of Riddick? What's the one before that? Oh, Riddick was good. I always forget the name. Pitch Black, my friend. Pitch Black. I always forget the name of Pitch Ooh. Black. And I always think of Black, 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 but I don't, can't think of the pitch, but, but yeah. So thanks for joining us tonight, guys. Uh, really appreciate it. Um, hopefully you enjoyed it. I'm probably going to cut this up into bits for YouTube. Digestible chunks. Yeah. That won't make you too sick. Exactly. And short pieces. Yeah. Edible pieces. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, Last of Last of Us TV series. Uh, Red Sun is um, out on stream. Um, what else? Um, Ap um, Apocalypse. The Justice League Dark Apocalypse is coming out next month on the 5th.
Was um, there's events too. I mean, we've got Auckland uh, Toy oh, Hobby yeah. Show. Yeah. We've got Redcon creeping up on us yeah, faster I'm, and faster. Am I going with you to Redcon? Are you going with me? Yeah, please. Yes. There we go. So we'll see you guys next week. Uh, we'll try to keep it to this where we have actual thing resources in front of us to work with. Yeah, and slam some subjects up. Throw some dialogue at us. Yeah. Tell our um, he looks like Gandhi. <laughs> oh, or a homie with glasses. <laughs> We'd look like Gandhi if he was a homie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, well, it's nine quarters of ten. Well, All right. another late one. Have a good weekend, people. Keep safe. Kakite ano. Malfunction. Rico. See you guys. Enjoy yourselves this weekend. And like I said, keep safe.